The broad contours of every budget are inevitably set by the underlying macroeconomy, this year more so than others. To discuss this and more, we have with us on this pre-budget show Shubir Gokran, Chief Economist, Standard & Poor's, Asia Pacific. Welcome, Shubir. Thank you. Since the presentation of the interim budget, there's been a shift for the better in the macroeconomic outlook. What do you think? Uh, broadly, yes. I think uh, the interim budget was presented in the middle of February. Uh, we were coming off what now appears to be the worst uh, quarter, October or December, in which we had the combined effects of tight monetary policy uh, through 2008 and the collapse of the global financial system resulting in enormous uh, outflows of capital, not just from India but from uh, all emerging economies. And that uh, the resultant liquidity squeeze actually really compressed uh, business activity, made it very difficult for businesses to, 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 to you know, even maintain their day-to-day -day activities. Uh, that phase eased off as governments started to pump uh, money in through fiscal measures. Central banks had already started to ease by, by about uh, August, September. And so the first quarter of 2009 uh, calendar, uh, actually saw uh, considerable easing of uh, this liquidity pressure. Uh, business was of course affected and business does not recover overnight. You know, there are, there are still uh, barriers and, 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 and troubles to, to overcome. But the pressure was uh, much less. And this was of course helped by the fact that inflation continued to soften over this period. So uh, with the macro economy slightly better off, but the fiscal outlook is really in a bad shape. Yes. So do you believe this uh, inheritance which he has, the new finance minister, will it cramp his ability to really free his shoulders as it were on spending particularly? Well, I think we have to break up the fiscal situation into two uh, sets of factors that brought us to this, uh, this uh, state. One is uh, the business cycle itself, which has resulted in uh, significantly lower revenues, particularly from the high growth years of 2006-07 and 2007-08. Uh, revenue collections have been, uh, have been much weaker, and that has been one source of pressure on the fiscal deficit. The second was, in a sense, you could say man-made or politics-made, uh, partly the loan waivers and the subsidies that we saw mounting in 2008, uh, subsidies in particular. So overall, you know, the, the environment, even for the fiscal, uh, from the fiscal viewpoint, has uh, improved considerably. So the, the, the challenge is somewhat less. It's still very significant, but it's somewhat less than it uh, could have been. Uh, and I think within this slightly improved uh, set of circumstances, uh, the, the government uh, should make use of uh, the opportunities it has uh, to try and gain control over it uh, as quickly as possible. Because the uh, the most negative thing that comes out of this is a loss of confidence, I think, uh, amongst investors. Mm -hmm. I think that's something we cannot afford to uh, mm -hmm. to take on right now. But what does it mean in terms of ability to uh, do a big spend to kind of give this demand boost, which then naturally will set its own dynamic in play? But is there room for such a big uh, spend? No, I, I don't think there is. There is very much room for government spending, although you know that well may be the uh, the requirement. Uh, I think what there is room for is uh, targeted spending, uh, creating conditions which allow for foreign investment to to come in. I think you know again compared with 2008, when uh, most of us had given up hope of seeing a revival in foreign investment coming into infrastructure and so on. The circumstances have changed quite uh, quite dramatically. So even though over the next six months or so we may not see much inflow, I think 2010 uh, will come back to near normal conditions where uh, foreign investors are looking for long-term stable returns and you know, the emerging economies are where those returns are going to be found. So India will be an attractive destination uh, over the next six months to a year. Uh, the government's challenge is to facilitate that. Uh, so not so much rely on its own resources, but create conditions uh, which uh, allow for larger inflows of foreign investment. And I think that is more of a policy issue than a fiscal issue, which uh, I hope the budget will address. So by using extending the logic, uh, can also uh, damp down expectations of any big tax concessions coming the economy's way at this point? I think so. I think the tax regime by and large is, is now in a sort of equilibrium. 
uh, barring the odd, you know, surcharge, CES, the FPT, things like that. I think the, we, the, the basic tax rate is now in a state where it's unlikely to change uh, dramatically up or down. Uh, we will see some adjustment, I believe, in the indirect taxes because we do have to converge uh, to the GST. And my own assessment uh, would be that the GST rate would converge to perhaps 14%.